Hi, welcome to Math After Hours with Miss Austin. I'm a licensed math teacher here to answer your math questions. And today we are looking at solving rational equations. A rational equation is an equation that contains variables in the denominator. So right here, this 5 over x plus x over x minus 3 equals 10 is an example of a rational equation. You need to be careful when it comes to rational equations because we have to deal with domain restrictions. So the domain of a function is the complete set of input values. But you can't divide by zero, right? So whenever you're dealing with a rational equation, you need to look at the denominator and see what would make that zero and write down those domain restrictions because you're going to need to compare your answer against those domain restrictions for each question. So if we go into this first one, we have 5 over x plus 15 over 3x equals 10. So 10 has a denominator of 1 right now. So first, let's look at restrictions. We have an x in the bottom and a 3x in the bottom. Since it's just this single x, and same thing here, there's just a 3 in front, if x was equal to 0, we would be dividing by 0, right? That would be 5 over 0 and 15 over 0. So off to the side, I'm going to write x cannot be 0. So if we solved this question, we found that x equals 0, it would actually be no solution because we have to compare it against those restrictions. The next thing we need to do is come up with our least common denominator. So if we were going to get a common denominator between these three, what would it be? Well, I'm not going to look too much at this one. This is a 1. We can make it whatever we need it to be. So I'm going to focus on these two. They have an x in common, but this one right here has a 3. So that means the least common denominator does need to be 3x. So what you're going to do next is multiply the entire equation by that least common denominator. Because what happens here is when you do 3x times 5 over x, well, the x's will cancel, because this is over 1, and then you're just left with 3 times 5, which is 15. Now I'm going to erase this so we can do it for the next one as well. So then we have the, this LCD multiplied by 15 over 3x. Well, we have 3x that will cancel out with the 3x on bottom, so we just get the 15. And then on this last one, we're multiplying 3x over 1 by 10. So nothing cancels because the denominators are just 1. So we have 3x times 10, which is 30x. So now we just have a linear equation to solve. 15 plus 15 is 30, and that's equal to 30x. So to get x by itself, we'll divide by 30 here, and we get that x is equal to 1. If I compare this against my restrictions, we are totally fine, because our only restriction was that x couldn't be 0, and we didn't get 0, we got 1, so that is our solution. If I come over to this next one, we have 7 over x plus 3 equals 2, and this is 2 over 1. So we have another restriction on this one because we have this x plus 3 in the bottom. What would we plug in for x right here to make this a 0? We would plug in a negative 3 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So off to the side, I'm going to write that x cannot be equal to negative 3. So we just need to make sure that we compare our answer against that restriction. What is the least common denominator? Well, this has a denominator of 1. We can make that anything we want. So that means it's just whatever is over here, this x plus 3. That's our least common denominator. So if we take this whole equation and multiply it by x plus 3, well, when we multiply 7 over x plus 3 by x plus 3, those x plus 3s will cancel, and we just get 7. And then if we multiply this x plus 3, let me get rid of my line through that. If we multiply that by 2 over 1, nothing cancels, so we have 2 times x plus 3. So this is 7 equals 2x plus 6, 
Then getting x by itself, we'll subtract 6 over. That's 1 equals 2x. So dividing by 2, we get that x equals 1 half. And that was not our restriction. Our restriction was negative 3, so that is the answer. On this one, we have 5 over x plus 3 over 2 equals 4 over 5. So we only have one variable here in the bottom, it's this x. So similarly to the first one, x cannot be 0, because if x was exactly 0, that would be 5 over 0, which we don't want. The least common denominator, well, we have x, 2, and 5. What's the smallest number that 2 and 5 will go into? 10. So 10 is part of the least common denominator, and then we also need the x from that last fraction, so it's 10x. So if I multiply this whole thing by 10x, we're multiplying that into all three of these terms. So 10x times 5 over x, the x's would cancel, and so you would just be left with 10 times 5, which is 50. Okay. Then when we do 10x times 3 over 2, the x won't cancel, but 2 can go into 10, right? So I can change this 10 over 2 just to a 5. So then it's 5x times 3, which is 15x. And then on the other side of the equation, when we do 10x times 4 over 5, similarly 5 can go into 10 twice. So then it's 2x times 4, which is 8x. So I'm going to get my x terms together by subtracting this over. So that's 50 equals negative 7x. And then to get x by itself, we'll just divide by negative 7. So my answer is negative 50 over 7. That was not one of the restrictions. So that is our answer. So the very last question is a really good problem. You'll see problems like this quite a bit when you're solving rational equations. And it's because we do have to factor on this one. So we have on the right-hand side of the equation 4 over x squared plus 2x. Those terms have an x in common that we can pull out, and we get x plus 2. So as we look at our restrictions, we have an x in the denominator, which means x cannot be 0. And then we also have an x plus 2. So right here, if we had a negative 2 for x, negative 2 plus 2 would give us 0. And then we have repeats over here, because we have another x and an x plus 2, and we already have those restrictions down. So the least common denominator for this one. You'll notice that these first two fractions, the denominators, if you multiply them together, you do get this denominator over here. So that tells us that this is the LCD. So x times x plus 2. So I'm going to multiply this whole equation by x times x plus 2. So when we do it right here, the x's will cancel. We have an x on top and bottom. So those would cancel, and we just have 3 times x plus 2. Then when we go to this second fraction, rewrite this over here. So we're multiplying this by x times x over x plus 2. So x times x plus 2 times x over x plus 2. So the x plus 2's cancel on that one, and we just have x times x, which is x squared. And then on the other side of the equation, we're going to have x times x plus 2 times 4 over x times x plus 2. So this denominator is exactly what we're multiplying by. So all of that cancels, and we just are left with 4 on that side. So now we have this equation, 3x plus 6, if I multiply in the 3, plus x squared equals 4. I'm going to rearrange the left-hand side so the squared term is first, then the x term, then the constant. And then this looks like we're probably going to have to factor, because we have a quadratic. 
So let's make sure it's equal to zero by subtracting the four to the other side. If you can't factor, you'll use quadratic formula, but we can factor here. What factors of two add to three? Two and one. So to solve this, we just set each of those factors equal to zero. So x plus two equals zero. We'd subtract two to the other side and we get negative two. Then if we set x plus one equal to zero, we'll subtract one to the other side and we get x equals negative one. If we compare these against the restrictions, look what happens. One of our answers was one of the restrictions. So that means this answer is what's called extraneous. It doesn't actually work. And so we would just cross that out. And the only answer is x equals negative 1. And that's why it's so important to write those restrictions down. That's a common mistake students make a lot, is not writing down those restrictions and then forgetting to check the answer. So make sure to write those down. And that's how you solve rational equations. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions you would like me to do, please comment them below, and I'll see you next time.